I want to go back in time to when you were a child. You laughed, cried, played, and ate everything and anything you could find, even if it meant you tried dirt, <laughs> or ate Cheerios right off the floor after they were just in your mouth. You were an explorer. It was pure and wholesome. Fast forward to today, you hop out of the shower, slap on your trusty Fitbit, and on your way out the door, you've already got a notification from your calorie tracking app to log in what you had for breakfast. While waiting in the Safeway checkout line, you may notice that you're comparing your body to the model's body on the magazine. Many of our New Year's resolutions involve hitting the gym or starting a new diet to only break it only a few days into the new year. And that's where a lot of our negative internal dialogue starts. Ugh, I really need to lose five pounds. Ugh, I really need to hit up the gym. God, do my thighs look big. <laughs> At what point in our lives do we start to deem our worth based on what the scale says? Many young Canadians as young as 10 years old, report dieting to lose weight. Children as young as two years old are identifying with thin idealism. This is extremely concerning because these ideas and behaviors follow them into adulthood. My name is Jem, and I have had quite the complicated relationship with food since I was 10 years old. I have been the person who's gone on extreme diets, had a tracker of my weight, and felt extreme shame as the number on the scale either remained stable or went up. I have struggled with dieting, eating, my personal body image, binging, restricting, and negative internal dialogue for years. I would go through cycles of binging and restricting and I felt un out of control. I reached out <laughs> to a doctor concerned with what's going on with me and they said to me that if I continued in my manner I may develop an eating disorder because I had binge eating disorder tendencies. I put rules and barriers around the food I was eating. These rules and barriers led me to this binge cycle. Isn't the point of food to sustain and nourish us? Why are we putting rules and barriers around it? When I was preparing for this talk, I looked up the synonym of diets just because I was curious, and two things came up, restriction and starvation. If that doesn't say anything about diets, I don't know what does. I believe that we need to be having these conversations about the toxicity of diet culture and its impacts because it's how we build strength to combat it. In 2019, I was at rock bottom. I felt utterly alone and depressed. I didn't know what to do. No one around me fully understood what I was going through. Not that they didn't try. I sought out help. I went to a nutritionist and a counselor to unlearn everything diet culture has taught me. The biggest thing that I have to give to you are three things that I did to help me in this journey. Number one, pinpoint all those negative internal thoughts. Why are my thinking this about myself. Why do I compare my body to others? And anytime you have a negative thought about yourself, say, no, thank you. You're not wanted here. <laughs> we need to say that to be able to build strength in ourselves. The second thing you need to do is unsubscribe or remove yourself from any sort of diet culture or influencers or even celebrities. It's easy to get caught up in all of it but what's the trade-off? When I was getting caught up, my mental health and my personal body image suffered. I felt horrible at myself. 
why don't I look like Kim Kardashian? <laughs> She's gorgeous. The last thing I had to do, and I still honestly struggle with it, but that's all right. I'm working through it. So I needed to learn to accept and love myself every moment of my life, no matter my body size and no matter what my body size will be in five years or so on. I believe that it's critical that we're having these conversations about the toxicity of diet culture and being vulnerable and asking for help like I did. It was not easy, I will be honest, but through vulnerability came strength. I have been able to connect with others who've gone through the same struggles as me and were able to build each other up rather than tear each other down. Being vulnerable and asking for help allows you to see that you're not alone. Thank you.